Imagine for a moment you're the kind of sicko that thinks the standard 545 horsepower Nissan GTR simply isn't powerful enough. I know, who says that, right? Well, for that thin slice of drivers who crave, oh, maybe double the output of a GTR, there's this insane bit of kit. <laughs> Built by a Chicago-based firm called AMS, the Alpha 12 GTR produces a stunning 1,100 horsepower on pump gas, and even more on racing fuel. And while all that power is arguably best suited for straight-line driving and wide-open spaces, we brought the Alpha 12 to Willow Springs Raceway in California to see if we could, in fact, tame those nuclear levels of power into submission while keeping all four wheels on the track. Welcome to the twisted world of AMS performance. If you're wondering what sort of mad scientist is crazy enough to wrestle even more performance out of Godzilla, meet Martin Musial, founder and owner of AMS. The appeal to me was, let's make something unsuspecting you know, a force to be reckoned with. You know, my philosophy is what would I want in a car? With the GTR, uh, I decided not to go aggressive styling-wise because I think it already is styled aggressively. It's a, it's a supercar. Uh, so I think adding on any flashy trim, parts, wings, uh, I think it kind of maybe uh, takes away from the, the soul of the car. And I think we're really the car where we could use it and appreciate it is really the power level. Not that it doesn't have enough already, but you know, hey, if we can make double, triple the horsepower, relatively safely, why not? Yeah, this is the Alpha 12. GTR was kind of the, the top of the line uh, package we have. Uh, this particular car on a 93 octane pump gas will make about 950 wheel horsepower. So about 11, 1150 at the crank. And we're talking 1400 horsepower on race gas. And this is truly a daily driver. Um, you know, you'd never know it. If you leave an automatic mode, just driving around normally, it's, it's obviously a little louder in stock. But other than that, it wouldn't really jump out and say, hey, I got 1200 horsepower, you know? It's really until you start using it, putting your foot to the floor is when it, it comes out and play. The car weighs about close to stock. We maybe lose about um, 75 pounds in the carbon fiber parts, but we retain everything in factory, just like a stock car, air conditioning, seats. And we had that, definitely have customers who drive it every day. I've got a customer in Florida who just, I mean, beats the living hell out of the car. And that's what we built it for, is to have fun with it, you know? Don't, uh, don't park in a garage, just show your friend that you go drive it, use it every day. This is a, actually a 4.3 liter engine, for, up from the factory 3.8. We do that through bore and stroke. Uh, so we scanned the whole engine bay and, and designed from ground up the perfect turbo kit, basically. It's integral to making all this horsepower, obviously. And then we developed the engine, head porting, uh, different components, strengthening parts in the block. The pistons are upgraded, the, the rods. We also use aftermarket valves to put up with the basically the abuse that the engine is going to put out. For the fuel system, we try to integrate with the factory components. So it's all factory lines. We just upgrade the supply side of it. I think Bassum's going to drive the car a lot. It's going to be really, really fast. Uh, Handling-wise, it's going to be like a stock GTR because we re remain that component stock. But obviously, the power there is going to be pretty insane. Uh, a stock GTR, you can kind of get on the throttle pretty hard, let it hang out a little bit. This thing, I mean, it, it'll it'll throw you off pretty fast. And it's deceiving. You don't even realize how fast you're going, so you just got to watch that. Eventually, all those bonkers performance numbers start losing their meaning. After all, Talking Shop simply can't prepare you for the first-hand experience of piloting this souped-up supercar on the track. Sometimes you've just got to strap yourself in, fire up the engine, and do everything within your power to stay out of the weeds. Driving this 1100 horsepower GTR on the track is kind of like bringing a missile to a night fight. This is really more of a drag strip, Texas mile kind of car, not a technical road course vehicle. And, I mean, we definitely make up lost time in the straights, but in the corners, once you power on, it just changes the game and you really have to be easy on the throttle. This car has a beautiful cacophony of mechanical sounds.
wastegate flutter and turbocharger whine. Everything is just really more immediate and powerful in this AMS Alpha 12 GTR. Holy shit. I've driven 730 horsepower Ferraris. I've driven 1,000 horsepower Bugatti Veyrons, but nothing compares to the raw rush of power you get from this ridiculous 1,200 horsepower GTR never driven anything like this. On a spider graph of performance, straight line is clearly the priority here. The, the stock GTR is really surprisingly capable in terms of handling. It's not like you're driving a car that's not capable in corners. However, when the engine kicks in, you really see how much more motor you have than tire. You're not going to be setting course records here at, at Willow Springs. You can do extremely well in the straights, but you're going to have to slow down for the corners. And until we get carbon ceramic brakes on this puppy, you don't want to rely too much on these stock rotors. I mean, they call the original GTR Godzilla, but now that feels like a vast understatement compared to what this beast can do. It just has such amazing urgency and such ability to move forward in space. It's just angry and vengeful and claws into the road and moves you forward at speeds you just can't believe. It must take an absolute lunatic to buy this kind of car. I mean, what do you do with all this power on the road? We're here at Willow Springs Raceway, which has the reputation of being the fastest track in the West, and I'm running out of room. Telemetry later revealed that we hit 162 miles per hour on the straight while barely even trying. And at those speeds, the rear wheels were actually spinning 2% faster than the fronts. Which is hairy, especially since this GTR's stock brakes aren't matched up to this colossal motor. But just when we were getting the hang of dancing with this devil, something went south. <laughs> That was interesting. Oh, that doesn't sound good. And the engine's dead. So, just heard a nasty sound, and I'm guessing it's the rear diff. Oh, ugly. So, we're backing this car back into the pits now. This is what can happen when you tinker with a car that already puts out 545 horsepower, and you squeeze a total of 1,100 horsepower out of it. Turns out our test car, which had 17,000 miles on the clock, snapped its transmission shift fork. Since the big track at Willow Springs wasn't available once the GTR was repaired, we had to reschedule for the tighter and more technical Horse Thief Mile, which made things, well, significantly more challenging, especially given this GTR's initial propensity for understeer which is followed by an abrupt onslaught of turbo boost. So while the stock GTR is definitely amazing in a straight line, it also has pretty impressive cornering capabilities. But when you give it 1100 horsepower, that really tips the scales in a certain direction. You get on the track and you really have to change the way you plan your apexes, the way you corner. Pretty binary. When you're not in that turbo boost, you're just kind of waiting for it to kick in, and when it does, it just kicks you with the ass. I don't think I've ever been so grateful for traction control on a car because this is a lot of horsepower to wrangle. I felt like I was cheating just a little bit with traction control on and saying I'm driving an 1100 horsepower car in the track. I'm gonna flirt with career disaster and turn it off, see what happens. into the throttle and getting drifts. This is hairy. Jeez. I feel like I'm wrestling a Brahma bull. I talk about bite, it just feels like this engine wants to kill me.
every time I power out of a corner, it feels like I'm being launched from an aircraft carrier. And I may not be going straight. The people that complain that the GTR is too clinical or too capable probably haven't driven it close to its limit because once you get up there and once you kind of reach that upper level of its capabilities, it just goes all the way back to your gut. You know, you feel it there and that's, I think, the beautiful thing about a car like this is when you do crazy things like squeeze all this torque and horsepower out of a motor, it just gives it so much more soul. I mean, you don't even quite have to drive it anywhere near its limits to feel that this beast is lurking beneath the hood. And that is a beautiful thing. Car and driver, I'm Bassam Lawson.